Hindustan Times, the Times of India, Business Standard, the Statesman, the Patriot, and has had more than 28 years of journalism experience in India. He has also been involved with a number of economic initiatives and was invited by the Parliamentary Standing Committee to give his considered views on important economic reforms programs. He has traveled extensively around the world and his most recently, his views were sought by the Parliamentary Committee to look at creating a regulatory authority to oversee the most ambitious program of the government, which seeks to give the UID card to the country's billion-plus population. May I invite Mr. N. K. Venu, please. I, uh, I'm delighted to be here, and uh, I thank the... Uh, IPPAI for giving me this opportunity to to uh, speak on the subject which uh, uh, which which I have studied uh, and I write on. I've written a few articles around uh, the future of uh, the the currency systems. Uh, where is the dollar headed? Where is <coughs> What, what sort of changes uh, uh, are we going to see in the next 20 years in the in the relative currency uh, 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 play uh, between the dollar, the euro, and some of the emerging currencies here, like the Chinese yuan? Uh, uh, so I will uh, uh, I'll just put some some broad thoughts before you, uh, based on some of the recent and current uh, developments, which. Uh, which might give us an idea of uh, the the roadmap for uh, uh, for for for, <coughs> for the sort of uh, multipolar, uh, in my view, currency system that we might see uh, in the next uh, a greater sort of democratized uh, currency system that we may see in the next 10, 20 years. Although the subject, uh, the topic that was given to me ended with a question mark, will the world see a single currency? <clears throat> so I'll, I'll just also try to explain why uh, there can't be a single currency because uh, uh, for various historical reasons and uh, <coughs> reasons of some of the current developments. Uh, uh, so I will, <coughs> you know, I, I, before I, uh, 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 before I sort of proceed, I just want to, uh, just simplify, I, 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 economists are known to, I, I'm not an economist, I'm an economic writer, so they're known to, uh, to uh, put things in, in very, very in complicated uh, ways. So I'd like to simplify the idea of currency and uh, in just two minutes and then I'll proceed to uh, give my view. <coughs> a currency in a nutshell uh, represents uh, the uh, in a way, it, it, it re truly represents the, the strength of uh, any economy, its, uh, its, its future productivity potential, and uh, uh, it's <coughs> essentially its, its inherent strength. Uh, and, and, and in this currency value uh, is embedded a whole range of factors, uh, uh, which, which, is, which is fairly tautological. I, I, I <coughs> now, besides being a purely an uh, an economic instrument. Uh, currency is also, uh, it's also a strategic uh, instrument in some ways. You know, cur currencies serve uh, certain powers uh, in establishing the hegemony. Uh, so, so in that sense, currency, there is a certain, you know, geoeconomic, geoeconomic, geopolitical aspect to uh, currencies too. Uh, <coughs> Uh, having said that, I would uh, like to just put before you a couple of narratives which are playing out in the in the currency uh, 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 sort of framework, in the global currency uh, framework today, as of today. <coughs> the uh, the fallout of the Wall Street triggered global uh, uh, financial uh, meltdown and the F and the F Federal Reserve's crisis management. Uh, which is still continuing, uh, has brought into sharp focus the need for uh, an alternative financial architecture uh, that can 
that can provide uh, a framework uh, for the inevitable shift in the axis of economic power towards emerging economies. Now, this is something which everybody accepts. Now, the uh, point I'm making is uh, the, the current narrative is that both the United States uh, and EU, uh, the two blocks which drove uh, economic growth in the pretty much in the 20th century, uh, are uh, dealing with uh, continuing a financial uh, crisis which, uh, which will have a deep impact on the, on the, on the currencies, in the way the currencies behave. Uh, the, the, there is a consensus in the, among economists in the U.S. Uh, and, of course, uh, even the European region that, that the dollar is in definitely in long-term decline. The dollar... Uh, <coughs> now, I'll, I'll just give you a, a very interesting bit of data to show why the dollar and the uh, euro, uh, they look like they're in long-term decline. Even if, even if temporarily... Uh, they strengthen in a in a maybe three month time frame, uh, be, because when there's when there's global uncertainty, there's a tendency to uh, what is called what market uh, people describe as flight to safety. A uh, lot of capital go back it, into the dollar purely as a panic uh, kind of reaction, but that should not uh, that should not uh, sort of that, that does not mean that the dollar is uh, coming back uh, uh, and strengthening on a more sustainable basis. Uh, the, the consensus view is that the dollar is in long-term decline. Uh, now, this data that I, was, I wanted to share with you is, uh, this is from a city bank research which I saw last week. Uh, in 2008, uh, sorry, 2007, uh, June 2007, uh, a year before the crisis, the Federal Reserve had $869 billion. The European Central Bank had uh, $1,622 billion. This is where the Central Bank uh, had this that the balance sheet had this money. Now, in the post-crisis, in the last three years, uh, March 2012, which is just uh, six months ago, uh, sorry, three months ago, uh, uh, Federal Reserve had, uh, the balance sheet had expanded to 2 uh, billion, 2.8 billion. Uh, so from 800, uh, sorry, 2.8 trillion. So from 800 billion, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has expanded to 2.8 trillion, three times. Uh, European Central Bank's balance sheet has expanded from uh, 1.6 billion to 3. Uh, 1.6 trillion to 3.9 trillion, also roughly about two and a half times. Now, what does this tell you? Uh, simple economics would tell you that that uh, that they have printed so much money in the last, uh, say, four years, both Federal Reserve and European Central Bank, nearly three times. So, uh, so what 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 will happen? What, happen to the value of the currency. If you print so much money, uh, you know, Federal Reserve is 800 uh, billion to 2.8 trillion. Now, you can well imagine if output remains the same and you, you, you printed money which uh, and created this huge increased liquidity. So, the value of that currency, very simple economics tell you that it has to fall. Because in the last four years, both the US and Europe haven't had uh, the output stagnated in the first two, two years after 2008, three years, and now they're just back to the same output level as they had in 2007. So output is where in the last four years where, they, where it was four years ago, and the <coughs> balance sheets, the printed money has uh, increased um, uh, by three times. So, <coughs> so this, this should, this clearly tells us that, that the, the that these currencies uh, will face problems in the near future, medium term, and also I believe in the long run, far future. Now, <clears throat> so therefore, Nobel uh, Prize winning uh, economist J Joseph Stiglitz uh, has made out a case for ending the dollar's primacy as an important uh, component of change in the, in the global financial architecture. Uh, now, many other uh, reputed economists have now begun to speculate whether the U.S. economy as well as the dollar uh, are indeed in long-term decline. Th there's a growing school of thought that the U.S. Uh, in, in the U.S. that its economy might just go the way of Japan uh, in the 1990s when massive bailout of the banking system by the Japanese government and uh, massive excess liquidity uh, in the economy in general had uh, 
had created conditions uh, of, of long-term low growth trap. Uh, it used to be described as, a, as also a liquidity trap, long-term, uh, where you kept pumping in more and more money uh, to a point where, uh, where bank deposit rate had, was down to zero. So uh, in, in some ways, people had to pay to deposit money in banks. Uh, this also happened with a bank in New York after the global meltdown where for some time people had to pay money when they deposited. Uh, <clears throat> so, so this is the nature of uh, uh, the crisis that we are, we are talking about with the, with the existing monetary system uh, which kind of governs the, the major currencies, reserve currencies. So, so there are a lot of scholars are speculating as to what will happen in the next, say, 10, 15 years. Uh, the, the EFSF uh, uh, head, uh, CEO, Klaus uh, Regling, told me that he expects that, uh, that the Chinese yuan will naturally rise as an important currency in the next uh, five, seven years. Uh, uh, and uh, he has uh, reasons to believe that uh, that we are moving towards a more uh, multipolar uh, currency system, <coughs> and he's uh, and he has uh, regling also has uh, first-hand experience of uh, what's going on. Uh, he told me in the uh, seeing an opportunity in a crisis at every economic finance stroke, financial crisis, the Chinese have stepped in and given a, uh, given lots of money. To, to various countries as currency swap arrangements. Uh, and by doing so, they have also tried to hedge themselves away from the dollar. Uh, they've realized, uh, for instance, after the 2008 crisis, they, they did currency swap arrangements uh, with the South Korea, with Brazil, with various other Southeast Asian economies, which, which needed money. <coughs> and and at, at multiple levels, the Chinese are trying to uh, ensure that uh, that they uh, familiarize, as it were, other countries with their currency, uh, since they figured that since trade is, uh, since their uh, net exports and uh, what is called net financing, uh, the best way to familiarize others uh, or, and other, other economies with your currency is to just do robust trade with them and do vendor financing, simple, simple economics. Just give them loans, let them buy your stuff, be competitive, and and that's the way your currency uh, will get will get currency, as it were, uh, uh, incrementally. And uh, and the Chinese economy today, uh, in PPP terms, has the same GDP as the U.S. economy. Uh, so, so the the, the, the Chinese uh, have. So the point I'm making is that yuan is a, is a currency which really needs to be watched in the next, say, five or six years. And uh, there's a very interesting article uh, by Dr. Arvind Subramaniam in the Business Standard. He's also written a book called Eclipse. Uh, if you get hold of that book, Dr. Arvind Subramaniam argues he goes a, 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 a financial center in Shanghai of the kind that Hong Kong is. So. So, so all these uh, activities uh, which I have just spoken about are very interesting and they're moving very, very rapidly. And I would even say in a, in a kind of non-linear way, things uh, could uh, sort of evolve in the next uh, seven to ten years. Uh, in the meanwhile, China has also spoken of, uh, of uh, since the subject asked whether there could be a single currency, as a tactical, uh, China knows that it will take some time to, to establish open capital convertible institutions. So uh, the transition that, uh, that happened in the 1920s where pound lost its dominance to dollar, that happened in a, in a rather cooperative and friendly manner because of the relationship between uh, between the UK and the US and the larger Bretton Woods uh, framework. Uh, uh, now, I'm not sure whether the transition uh, in the next 10 years, if, if Yuan is sought to be internationalized and uh, uh, in, in certain ways, uh, whether it will have the same kind of uh, uh, transition uh, that we saw 
between dollar and pound uh, in the 1920s because because uh, global politics, geopolitics is uh, panning out in different ways. There's, there's too many other tensions which are yet to be resolved uh, <coughs> in the relationship between China, other Asian economies, uh, emerging market economy, and between China, US. So th these are all, in my view, uh, uncertainties which, uh, uh, which, which of course will, uh, <coughs> which, which will, which will need to be studied. Uh, on a continuous basis, uh, um, but what is s certain is that the U.S. is slowly losing its power, and uh, it, today it is estimated that more U.S. assets in value are held by entities outside the U.S. than within. Uh, no wonder Americans have begun begun to say the dollar is our currency, but it's your problem. Uh, as a consequence, the U.S. monetary policy is also in some ways uh, world's monetary policy to the extent that. That the rest of the world economies uh, are holding uh, most of the forex reserves in dollars. Uh, so, in some ways, the Fed also Federal Reserve becomes the world's central bank in some sense. Uh, so, therefore, the the transition to this uh, to uh, to a new currency or a, to to a to a set of new currencies is not going to be easy. Uh, it has to be, in my view, uh, the alternative financial architecture will have to be evolved in very close cooperation with the United States. And the Chinese uh, understand this more than anybody else because uh, bulk of their three trillion dollars are still uh, held in uh, uh, well, the, uh, the three, uh, three trillion foreign currencies held, still held in U.S. dollars. Uh, of course, of late, the last two years, uh, they are moving more into gold. Gold imports to China are the highest in the last two years, uh, uh, and by and by, they. They are trying to, as I said, uh, move into assets, uh, other assets, away, hedging away from the dollar. But uh, as I said, politically, this transition uh, will be full of, uh, uh, full of, uh, well, it, uh, very full of interesting twists and turns. And uh, I just end by saying, as the Chinese often say, uh, we are living in interesting times. Thank you.